All right, this should be the last video in the series. Um, in the previous video, we finished drawing uh, the hand with the caulking gun, and we exported that as a PNG. So now we can, in this video, we can import it into SketchUp, and and we'll. So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to import it into SketchUp. We're going to draw some caulk around the window, and then we are going to. Uh, put that image into our field guide. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into SketchUp and, and get back into our basement assembly that we've drawn. And the goal again is we're going to, we want to draw some caulking around this window and then we'll put that hand in, in, in front of it and make it look like that, that's, that we're applying the caulking. Um, so to do that, I, I just want to basically somehow draw like a, a, a bead of caulk right here on the side of this window. And um, I think the easiest way to do that would be to just draw kind of a, a cylinder, just a, a straight cylinder of something. Um, and so what I've done, I've, here I'll just delete this and do it again. Uh, so I'm just going to create a new layer called caulk. And if I could spell it right. And I'm going to make it my active layer so that whatever I draw will land on that layer. And then um, I want that tube to land in here, but it's going to it'd be very hard to draw that in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it out here. I'm just going to use the surface of this foundation to draw it. And I'm going to start by drawing a circle. And I'm probably just going to put it right here. So right on the face of this, I'm going to click my center point, and I'm going to pull out away from there. And I want the radius of this to be maybe 3 16 of an inch. So I'm just typing in 3 over 16 and then the inch sign. So down there in the bottom right corner of the screen, you can see I've got the length in there at 3 16 And I'm going to hit Enter. And then I'm just going to rotate around and create a circle. And when I get back to this point, I'm going to click to finish it. Then I'm going to group that. So I've just selected just that circle. And I'm right clicking and making that a group. And then what I want to do is I want to, it's, it's kind of on a, a vertical plane right now. I want to tip it down onto a horizontal plane. So I'm just going to rotate around here so you can see what I'm doing and zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna grab my rotate tool and if you can see on this plane that where I actually want it, this red plane is the plane I want it to be on but when I come out onto this side of the foundation it turns green well before I grab anything I'm gonna hit shift and I'm gonna use my arrows and I'm going to click on my arrows until it turns red now I can uh, slide over and I want to I'll probably just go off of that bottom corner I basically want to make sure I'm gonna tip this out and once I've tipped it out it'll be out it won't be inside that foundation wall it'll be out kind of parallel with it so I'm gonna click right there on that bottom corner and then I'm just gonna uh, drag out on the that green plane and once I get out here a little ways I'm just gonna click and then I'm going to drag down. And as you can see, it's tipping that down. And once I get down to the 90 degree point, I'm going to click again. And now I'm done. So I basically just rotated that circle so that it's, that it's touching the, the face of my uh, foundation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool over here, which is the Follow Me tool. And what it does is it will let me drag the face of something in a specific direction on a path. So if I wanted to, I could I could draw like a, a weird shaped path and it would follow it. Uh, but in this case, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line and I'm gonna draw a line right off of this bottom corner and I'm just gonna draw the line down. And let's make this about 10 inches long. So I'm just gonna make 10 inches of caulk. So I've just typed in 10 inches and hit enter and you can see that it has drawn that line. Now I'm going to go up and I'm going to hit that, that follow me tool and I'm just going to 
um, go in here and tell I I got to explode this. I think either well maybe I can just edit the group. So I'm going to try that, and you can see as soon as I'm on that surface, it will it highlights that, and I want it to follow that line, but it's not doing it. Um, maybe I'll just redraw the line in here. So I'll draw the line down, and we'll make it 10 inches, and hit enter, and then I grab the follow me tool and just drag it. And you can see it just snapped all the way to the end of that line. Now I could have just pulled the face of that if I wanted to, but I, I also wanted to show you guys how to use the Follow Me tool. That's a tool where if you drew like a series of lines in a bunch of shapes, then you can actually just drag it and it'll follow whatever that shape is and make you all kinds of cool things. Um, so now that I'm done with that, I have this this tube, and that, that thing is a... Uh, Com a, not a component, but it's a group. So, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to move that over to where it's right on the side of the window. And since the foundation wall is there, it might be hard to do that. So I'm going to turn off the foundation layer and make that invisible. And then I'm just going to use my move tool and I'm going to grab that and I'm just going to slide it right over and stick it right on the edge of my window. And then let's make the foundation visible again. And zoom out and see if that worked. OK, so there it is. There's only one problem. It's white, and it does, it's not very visible. It just looks like part of the window. So what we need to do is we need to paint it a different color. And so since we've made it a group, I should be able to just click on the, the group, and it'll paint it. Oh, I can see I need to erase my line also. So, um, but we need to find a color that's going to work. I, I, I've thought about maybe like a something that looks kind of like a blue or a clear color, but as I paint that, that doesn't really stand out very well. Um, this purple, maybe something like that might work, but we we need it to stand out well enough in the image here. Um, that once we take a picture it will also show up and we also want it to like not be a confusing color either so um, let's try some of these browns and stuff um, that that could be a little bit of a confusing color uh, maybe we'll pretend that it's like an almond colored caulk or something anyway click around a little bit see if you can find a color that works that has a decent contrast uh, so hopefully it will show up well. I think this is going to be way too light. Yeah. But I don't want it to look like um, two-part foam or anything. We don't want to. We don't want people thinking that would it would be okay to do two-part foam uh, around a window because that could just make a mess. But anyway, I think I'm going to leave that as the color. It's it's kind of an off-white. We'll see how that works out. Okay, so now what we need to do, so that was our caulk layer. I'm going to add a layer, and we're going to call it um, the caulking gun. So, And I'm going to make that my active layer. And I'm going to import that PNG that we drew in the last video. So I'm going up here. To file and I'm going to import and basically you just navigate to the the PNGs that you had wherever they were now in our last video they uh, I, I used this one with a little blue label on it but I found that if I put that blue label next to this blue window it really doesn't have much a very good contrast so I'm gonna grab this red one and I'm gonna import it and you'll notice that it just kind of comes in floating and you have to pick you kind of want to put it on a plane where you can put it, it that it's like in front of everything so I'm just gonna drop it right over here I'm gonna click once and then you'll notice as soon as you click then it's basically letting you scale it and so I'm just gonna drag until 
it looks like it's about the right size. Um, you know, think about how big an arm would be next to a four foot tall window. So, so that's the image that we brought in. Now we need to do a couple things with this image. We need to make it a component. And if we make it a component, then we can rotate it around it um, and it will always face the camera. And, uh, and then we can always use it as well. So if we wanted to drop a caulking gun in another area of our, of our basement assembly, then we could drop multiple images of this and uh, it'll allow us to do some cool things there. So, so I'm gonna right click on this. Now before I do that I, I don't want to get anything else included in this so I'm gonna make some of this stuff around it disappear. That way I know this thing's there I'm not selecting anything else but I'm gonna right click on it and I'm going to explode it and then I'm going to um, I wanna hide these lines so if I select that line and delete it, you'll see that it deletes the whole thing. I'm going to hit con Control Z to undo. That's not what I want to do. But I want to select each of the lines. So I'm hitting my, I'm holding my Shift key down, and I'm selecting all four of those lines. And then I'm going to continue to hold the Shift, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to select Hide. So it's hiding that the frame that's around this image because I don't want to see that. Now I'm going to select. Uh, so I'm just selecting that that inside image and if I right click it's not letting me do what I want it to do I want to turn it into a uh, an entity or a, that's not the right term anyway I, you're gonna drag and select everything which includes those four hidden lines now if you'll right click um, it should let me turn this into maybe I have to group it first let's see file edit Oh, make component that's the that's the goal so I'm gonna click on make a component and it's gonna automatically set the axes um, and match the axes of the of the drawing that you're doing um, but in the component before you hit create you wanna click on always face the camera and then if you want shadows then the shadows would face the Sun but if you haven't turned on shadows you won't see them so it doesn't really matter and then I'm just going to give this component a name. I'm just going to call it um, Caulking Gun. And I'm going to hit Create. And you'll see that the Caulking Gun is a component. And it is on the Caulking Gun layer. I'm going to make the other layers appear. And this is what's kind of interesting. I'm going to hover around here now. So this is set, it's a two-dimensional image, but it's set to always face the camera. So watch how if I rotate, that image rotates as well. It's always going to face the camera. So it, it's nice because then you can kind of hover around it and it will always kind of look like it's a three-dimensional image. But you'll notice that sometimes it'll disappear into a wall and stuff because it's, it's just going to rotate on that axis and always face the camera. So now what we need to do with this is we want to we want to move around into a position where we feel like we've got a good angle on our caulking or whatever we're trying to show in the picture. And then I'm just going to use my move tool and I'm going to move the this component. So I'm going to slide it over here and I'm going to keep it on that red axis if I axes if I can and I'm going to kind of get it close to where I want and but you want to be careful because it's going to start snapping to different axes or to different um, planes so like this one if, if you get it to snap down to that caulk well it's on that flat plane you can see that half of its missing or hidden behind the the window so I like to keep you know you'll have to kind of move it around keep it where you want it and then I'm just going to let go and then I'm going to drag it down so that it kind of stays floating out here in space in front of the window but I'm also able to actually move it to where I want so um, and then so I've kind of positioned this the foundation and, and my my screen basically at the angle that I want it to be on and I'm going to take a snapshot 
Now before I do that, I want to create a scene. So uh, down here toward the bottom of all of your, your default tray, there's a thing called scenes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the plus sign and it's going to add a scene. And you'll notice that it puts scene number one right up here. Now I like to right click on it and I like to rename it. So I'm going to rename it um, window calc. And it doesn't do anything when you hit rename. I think that's a bug in the system. But if you'll just start typing, so I'll just put window and hit enter, it changed the name. So I couldn't see myself typing. It seems broken, but once you type and hit enter, it'll change. So now my scene is called window calc. And what's cool about that is, so I've selected this, and I don't want the blue lines to show up in my picture. So I'm going to zoom out. And I'm just going to get out here in, in the into space, and I'm just going to click so that nothing in my picture is selected. And now I'm going to click on that window calc, and it's going to take me right back to where I was, zoomed in nice and tight on the window calc. Um, and what's cool is, you know, if you wanted to create a second scene, so let me just do that for an example. So maybe over here, uh, we would. Let's do the components and let's grab the caulking gun. And maybe you have to caulk something up here. So if you ended up doing that, and you could create a new scene for that. So I'll add a scene that is, and we'll rename it Air Seal, or we'll do Seal the Seal, S E A L S I L L, and hit enter. So that's, this is kind of our camera. and. Um, they're called scenes because one of the things that uh, SketchUp is used for is actually to lay out like movies and, and uh, movie scenes and things like that. So you can literally draw or wireframe things that you want in a movie and then click from scene to scene. So now we have the windowsill scene. Now I'm going to click over to window calc and it's gonna, the camera is going to pan back over or I'll go back over to the, the sill and it just takes me right back to the exact angle that I was looking at that scene before. The other thing that's kind of cool is uh, if you don't really like the angle that you're on, maybe maybe you'd move things around and go, oh, I need to get in here a little tighter. And then uh, maybe you have to move that around a bit just to get it out where you want it in space. Um, and maybe you have to use your shift buttons to get it to do what you want. Nope. I'm not having any luck here. We'll just leave it there for a second. Anyway, uh, it, once you've once you've got the better angle of what you want, you can actually. So I'm still selected that scene. You can update the scene. So now, if I, you know, again, I, I moved the camera a little bit. Um, I'm gonna hit the update button here, and it will update the seal seal scene. So. And, it's, and it wants to know, do you want, next time you uh, go to this scene, do you want the camera location updated? Do you want all the visible layers updated? You have to be careful because when you add new layers um, and you go back to your scene, those new layers won't be visible. But if you'll update things, then it will show all your new visible layers. Uh, any of your fog or style or shadow settings, all of those things. Um, so they will all update. And now again, I'm going to go back to the window calc scene. You'll see it there, and then when I go back to the seal, seal scene, it will be exactly where I had left or angled the camera. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to window calc, and now what we need to do is we just need to c capture an image. So I've been using a tool called, uh, it's a screen capture, and it was called Jing, J-I-N-G, but um, it's made by a company called TechSmith, and they've recently updated it, and now they call their tool Capture. But it's a free download, so if you'll go to techsmith.com, and you can download the Capture tool. This is what it looks like. And I'm just going to start a capture. And I think if you hold down the Shift button, anyway, it'll it'll snap to certain sizes, uh, like ratios. So it'll go to a one to one or a a three to four ratio, whatever you're looking for. But I'm going to just click over here in the upper corner and I'm going to try and capture the amount of screen I want and if I if you want it to be 
Uh, that looks like a, a four to three ratio. Um, let me see if control gives me something different. Or alt. I don't remember which button was giving me what I wanted. Maybe a shift. Yeah, there's. No, oh, that's letting me do whatever. Anyway, you can play around with it and kind of get um, what you want, or you can just not worry about it because when you put it into into our website, it's not going to matter. So I'm I'm just going to capture right here. I may even adjust that a little bit so I can get a little bit more up there. And and then once I've got my once I've got this set right where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and take a capture of the image, and then. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to save the image. I'm saving this image as a PNG, and I'm just going to call this image. Um, I think I actually saved an image already, but I want to. I'm going to replace it, so I'm going to call this image the same thing as this one, window caulking. So window caulking and hit save and yes I want to replace the other one and then I'm just gonna close the preview that was the capture thing so now I've saved that image now let's go into our website now in my website I actually I had uploaded the image already but I'm just gonna hit undo so this is what it would look like so when you come to the website um, just hit the uh, plus sign and we're just going to upload an image and you'll navigate to wherever you save that PNG and I'm going to grab that window caulking and add it there. Now I don't want to see the bottom of this ghosty looking wrist so I'm going to crop this and I'll zoom in on it a bit and move it down to where I want it hopefully I want to kind of see the top of the window, but I also want to see that full caulk gun and you know parts of the wrist. So work that around to wherever it looks good and then hit OK. And that's our image. Now as you can see, that caulk may or may not be showing up very clearly. Um, we may need to make some adjustments to it. We may need to pick a higher contrasting color. Uh, we may need to caulk this a little bit more, or caulk, uh, crop this a little bit more so that we can see more of it. Go ahead and do that. But move that around and make sure that that image looks like you want it to look. If it doesn't, you can go back into SketchUp. You could change the angle of things a little bit and you know you could change the contrast of the color of that and you could update your let's see that would be my materials and color maybe we'd change it to a different color no that's not light enough maybe I don't know but then we could reset the scene and take another picture and hopefully get more of what we are after in our picture so anyway that's it um, hopefully you can apply what I've shown you here to draw whatever you need to draw and uh, make whatever images and scenes you need so good luck and have fun